Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. What we have here is a coffee grinder. It is a coffee grinder? Yes. Yeah, is. Christine's just here. Now, Christine uses this in her kitchen not to grind coffee, but I think she grinds sugar. I usually use it to grind sugar, yeah. Okay, and it seized up or something happened. What happened to it? I may have been grinding chalk. <laughs> chalk? Yeah. Like for the blackboard chalk? Yeah, well, it's for my little sewing wheel, yeah. Oh, so it had chalk in it. And what actually happened to it? it... Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's no show without punch, hey? What are you doing, Coco? <laughs> Just sit down and let us finish this. So I was grinding um, chalk so that I could put it in my sewing chalk wheel because it uses it to trace on fabric. So... <laughs> <laughs> Coco, that was her, not me. Um, so, and it may have been a jumbo chalk stick. A jumbo chalk stick. So it's very tight. What was it doing when you tried to turn it on? Well, it started to turn and then it stopped. Okay. Was there smoke? Uh, no, no, it wasn't smoking. Okay. So it seized up. All right. I'm going to take it to the workshop and see if we can save it because otherwise it was going to be thrown out or probably thrown to the e-waste. But if we can at all save it, it might have another life grinding sugar, <laughs> not chalk or coffee. <laughs> Maybe smaller sticks of chalk. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll take it out to the workshop now. And as for this monster, <laughs> don't know. She's um, had too many red cordials today, I think. All right, off to the workshop. Okay, out in the workshop now. It's a bit quieter out here, although the dog did follow me. She's crazy tonight. Don't know what's got into her. Okay, now it's very, very tight. So I've just plugged it in, and if you push this down, it should buzz and spin the blade. And all we're getting is a, a hum. So it's seized up. There's something well and truly seized up. Whether it got hot and melted something... Or whether it's just got chalk down into the bearings, I don't know. But um, we'll pull it apart and see if we can save it. So it looks like it's easy to get into. We've just got a couple of Phillips head screws on the base. Okay, here we go. It's, um, I don't know how old this thing is. It, it probably has been around for quite a while. Now, we need to take the cutter off the top to be able to get the motor out the bottom. And that um, stainless steel bowl uh, will probably stay in and the shaft will push down through it. Now, to get these blades off, they usually thread on and sometimes they're a left-hand thread, depends which way they spin. And most appliances that have blades or something attached directly to the motor shaft usually have a slot in the bottom of the shaft at the bottom end, which means you can actually hold that with a screwdriver. And by doing that, we should be able to turn the blade. And I don't think it's very tight. Yep, it's actually starting to come out. So it actually helps that the motor's seized because I think the blade's now going to spin. I'll spin it around so you can see. So because the shaft is so tight, I don't even have to hold it now. And the blade's just undoing. So... That doesn't appear to be damaged. Looks like it's got a little hairline crack around that plastic, but I think it's still serviceable. Right, so look at the muck that's got in there underneath that. Now, I'm not sure if that was the remains of a seal or whether it's chalk dust combined with oil. I don't know. But we should be able to slide the motor out the bottom now. There we go. So uh, the rest of that's okay, it just needs a clean up. We'll put that aside. And let's have a good look at the motor. All right, so that's a rubber mounting. So that looks okay, it just needs a clean up. And perhaps that actually was a, a rubber seal that went right up against the shaft and it's actually chewed it out. Not totally sure there. We probably won't know until we clean it up. And that looks like 
whether there was a bit of a fiber washer there not sure we'll have to um we'll have to give that a good clean up and we might just get some some penetrating lubricant or something in there good quality uh, light oil and see if we can lubricate that a bit and try and work out if it has got a seal there or not all right i've just cleaned this rubber piece up a bit and i don't think it's damaged and from what i can gather the blade the base of the blade when it's done up tight actually seals on top of the rubber it would compress it a little bit so um, that will seal and keep whatever you're grinding out of the motor um, or of course well, you know stuff has got in but that's all that's supposed to happen I don't think there was another seal that's been damaged so that should be okay especially if it's only going to be used occasionally so we really just need to get in to these bearings um, because it's very very tight still I tried to turn it with a screwdriver and I could barely move it so to get the motor apart there's a retaining screw in that side but we can't get to the head of it until we um, take these components out of the road now there's a resistor across a couple of terminals and I'll have to unsolder that and then there's a capacitor that sits down in this bracket and that will just be a, a filter capacitor just to stop interference most uh, electric motors on appliances have a capacitor to stop interference on you know radio and tv and that sort of stuff so but that'll slide out of the road once we unsolder the resistor the other side is okay we can get to the head of that screw and then we should be able to then separate this housing where the bearing is now i would imagine that the bearing this end is going to be the one that's tight i don't think the bearing the other end will be too bad but whilst we have it apart we might as well get a bit of lube into both of them all right i'll unsolder one end of this resistor and then we can take the screws out and dismantle the motor okay it looks like they've soldered it and folded the wire around which is always a bit of a bugger it's much easier if you can just melt the solder and the part falls off All right, I might have to use the solder um, sucker to get rid of some of the solder there. So, as usual, I'll put a little bit more solder on because the solder sucker works so much better when there's a decent quantity there. All right. That freed it up a bit. I think it's still stuck, but at least I can see the hole now. There we go. You can usually just bend the wire with the actual soldering iron once you get a bit of room to move. I think that's actually free now. All right, we should be able to take that out. There we go. We'll bend him out of the road. It's pretty easy to see where he goes when we have to reassemble it. Now the capacitor should just bend out of the road. And now we can undo these screws. They're a very coarse threaded screw. Certainly not a fine machine screw. They're like a large self-tapper actually. And this one. Okay. Now given that the bearing's so tight, I'm guessing that this housing isn't going to come off very easily it feels very tight on that shaft we might have to put a bit of spray there to um, encourage it to work its way off right it's the next day i let the uh, spray soak into the bearing overnight and then i had a bit of a scratch around and this little shim came off and it looks like the remains of an o-ring it's rubber and it's been chewed up a bit so it perhaps has been hot uh, but I think it's just an O-ring, so I'll be able to find something to replace that one because that one isn't actually any good. And I've made note of where this little shim comes from. It just sits against the bush. So they don't have roller bearings, these things, not like old equipment. They just run bronze bushes. Now, i got a screwdriver either side. I had a flat blade screwdriver either side. 
and gently prized on that bracket and it just popped and it's come off but unfortunately well fortunately unfortunately the bronze bush you can see there is still well and truly um, attached to the shaft it didn't want to slide at all and it was held in with little spring clips you can see there now this bracket is riveted I don't really want to have to take that off but the spring clips should push back over the bearing once we get the bearing out now I'm calling it a bearing even though it's a bush so this housing's fine and looking at the shaft here it looks like it's got a bit of corrosion there so it's quite possible that liquid's been seeping through this seal for a long time and eventually it's bound up the the shaft going through this bronze bush so we have to get this bush off next and i might also note that the other end bearing seems to spin freely so as expected it's the one just under the cutter blades that has seized up so to get that one off it's going to be easier to get the armature actually out of the motor and to do that we're going to have to release these springs here and lift the brushes back and there's a circlip on the end here so once we get the brushes out of the road and the spring pressure just holds them in now there we go a bit of a tap and there's the brush there carbon brush and I'm not sure if we're focusing on that but it's actually got plenty of life left in it there's a fair bit of carbon there so that's fine to reuse and we need to take them out first so that we don't damage them because they do run on uh, the armature so I've got the other brush out and the clip off the end and there was a little shim washer there as well so we'll keep those to one side and now there's nothing holding the armature in so it should just slide through the bearing the other end and there we go so this part here where the brushes run is called the commutator and it looks to be in pretty good condition uh, when a motor burns out you'll find that it arcs across those gaps and it it can um, it's pretty obvious that it's no good whereas that one appears to be fine uh, the other thing is when a motor is at the end of its life the brushes have usually worn out and the metal brackets start to rub on the commutator or the springs but anyway that's all in pretty good order and the bearing at this end was fine because it just slid through beautifully there is another little shim and a fiber washer there we'll have to make sure they stay on the shaft or at least i'll take them off but i'll note where they go and there's another clip just a retainer clip there that should be fine to stay on there all right so we need to get this bush off here it feels just absolutely solid we know it does turn because we could turn the the motor even though it was very firm, very firm so i might give that another soak with some spray lube and we'll get some fine emery paper to run around and clean the shaft off a bit and hopefully we can tap it off without damaging it because i think we can reuse it we just need to clean it up and lube it now i'm out in the other room now i've got a little railway track anvil a really handy little piece of steel this one now because this bush bronze bush doesn't have to be a, a specific diameter to press into a housing uh, it's just held by a spring steel clip it's not going to matter if we just mark it a little bit and all i'm going to do is just put a little bit of a shock through it and it might help free it up well it should so i'm just going to rotate the shaft and give it a tap all the way around and it should free up the uh, the binding on the inside. And bronze is pretty soft, so you don't want to hit it too hard. So it's still, and we'll get this to focus. It's still too tight to turn by hand. But I will get some pliers on there, and perhaps just a bit of cloth first, so the pliers don't really chew the bronze out. Give me a little bit of purchase on it, and I should be able to turn it. We've got some spray lube there, and it should free up. Once I can get it to move, I'll slide it off, and then we can clean the shaft up. So I've just put the end of the armature in my cordless drill, and that's going to enable us to pretend we've got a lathe, 
and just clean up the shaft with some very fine sandpaper. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's still a bit pitted. I'm not going to worry about that because that part wasn't under the bush anyway. Um, so it's cleaned the shaft up quite well. I reckon we can now just clean out the inside of the bush and uh, we'll start to reassemble. So we don't want to take any more metal off than necessary. I'm just basically using a screwdriver and a rag just to make sure it's nice and clean in there. And hopefully now that's a nice fit over the shaft and beautiful yep that feels great so rather than put this back on here and try and fit it into that housing I'm going to press the, the bronze bush back into the housing first and then we should be able to assemble it we'll give a little bit of lubrication and we can assemble the, uh, the motor and hopefully she goes well I can't see why it won't now that it's not bound up like it used to be that's great Okay, we have a small dilemma here. I was trying to just press this back in past this spring steel retainer, thinking it might slip past, but all it did was started to push those fingers down. Uh, so that's not going to work. So I need to take that bracket out, that spring steel bracket, which means drilling out these rivets. They're not actually even rivets. It's just the, um, the steel has an indentation and they've peened over the top of it so they'll drill out okay and I might just have to put some copper rivets back in but we need to get that out to be able to fit the bush in so our small dilemma has turned into a larger dilemma and uh, I'll keep going with this video even though this is probably a bit of a failure now because what's happened um, you can see some screws there they're just sitting through there that are right size to actually use as rivets I couldn't find any copper rivets but the problem was when I drilled out those uh, those pieces that were holding that retainer in the bit drill bit I used grabbed and it actually bent one side of this spring steel bracket it's very very thin and just in straightening it it cracked and I'll just put that down for a tick and you can see it's actually cracked through that side and through that side and if you look back First, when I when I first started to tap this bronze bush in, I think it actually partially cracked there, and I was looking back on the video footage, and it looked like it was partially cracked. So it's extremely brittle, that spring steel piece, and it's very, very thin. So it certainly wasn't designed to be removed and have the bushing replaced or anything like that. But what we're going to do is we'll persist. We'll see if we can get the thing going. It probably won't last super long, and I think this bracket will still clamp the bush fairly well but it's possible that if the shaft gets tight again the bush may actually spin within the housing which will wear things out very very quickly anyway we'll sit we'll keep going we'll put it back together and we'll just see how long it lasts um, but you know the the purpose of uh, trying jobs and and the process of having fail failures is what actually teaches you to improve your repair skills uh, and I know to be a lot more careful with these spring steel pieces now. So all I'm going to do with these screws is just use a, a hammer and just peen the ends over it so they'll be like rivets. It should hold the thing all fairly stable. Even though it's cracked, it's not really loose. It, I think it'll pull down tight on the edge, edge of the bush. So I'll secure this now. We'll put the uh, the motor back together. We'll use a little bit of very tiny bit of grease in the uh, in the bronze bush and um, I might try and find an o-ring just to seal the end we'll put it all back together and hopefully it goes and hopefully it has a bit more of a life before we have to throw it in the in the scrap I mean when it's when it's no good I will put this electric motor in the in the copper wire scrap so it will be sold and re you know recycled but We'll see if we can get a bit more life out of this thing before it meets its its end. 
Right, so I've got all this secured now, and it's firmed up pretty well. You can see I've just peened the ends of those screws over. So they're kind of just like crude rivets. But they had countersunk heads this side, which located the bracket in the right spot. So the bracket is all nice and firm, even though it has cracked. And when I put the armature through the bush, it, um, it actually looks and feels pretty good. It spins nicely on there. The bush will move to, it's a self-aligning bush, and it will move, and it doesn't appear super loose. So they don't, might actually hold pretty well, but, you know, it's not what I'd be happy with doing. But we don't have a choice. I'm not going to try and fabricate another bracket. The job's just not worth it. Uh, we've achieved our aim of freeing up the bush, so we can put the whole thing back together. And it should live to grind some more sugar, perhaps. Or we may even just use it as a chalk grinder. Even though Christine promised she wouldn't do it. Okay, time to reassemble. I'm just going to use a very light film of grease on this shaft. Now, it's just a general purpose grease. Um, you do have to be aware if you're doing appliances that do deal with food. That you should use a, a food grade grease or at least something that isn't toxic um, this one is pretty well sealed from the bush to the actual workings of it and we're using such a minute amount that it wouldn't be an issue anyway I think but if this ends up just being a chalk grinder it's not going to matter what we use there we go that looks really good feels nice and smooth so I think that's going to Actually, I think that's going to last pretty well. All right, so time to assemble it back into the motor housing. Uh, we will put a little film of grease on the other end, even though that bearing was good. We may as well lubricate it while we've got the thing apart. So we'll feed that back through the housing. No, hang on now. There was a little washer here and a spacer went on first so that's why it's a good idea to take photos as you pull things apart so that you don't miss those little bits or at least lay them out in their right order on a spot on the workbench where they're not going to get um, knocked or or lost okay so now we're right to go and that's pushed home nicely. It's come through the end there. Now there's a clip to go on that yet. And then we've got to install the brushes and then put our capacitor and resistor back. All right, we have one little spacer over there. And our clip. Now these can be a bit tricky if you're not used to them. You do need to hold them in the groove when you put pressure on. And I've heard people refer to them as a, a Jesus clip. Because if they don't click into place and they let go and fly across the room, you say, Jesus, where did that go? And you probably never ever find it. All right, so that ends it fully together. This end now pushes up nicely. We can do the screws up and secure the housing together. And we'll give it a bit of a spin and make sure it feels nice to spin over. Okay, we won't do that super tight until we get the other side pulled up square. It's always a good idea when you're doing up something that has screws on either side or around, around the whole thing. Um, to do them in a sequence rather than one side really tight and haven't even pulled the others down and if you can hear that puffing Coco just came for a visit she's been running around the yard like a lunatic but she likes to come in to see what I'm up to not that she's helpful but she thinks she is okay there we go now look at that beautiful that's feeling like a new one little bit of end float which is important you need to check that if you've done put the assembly together and you've got a washer or a spacer in the wrong place and there's no float 
uh, it will be binding somewhere and you, and you won't want to run it because you'll get really hot and you'll burn something out. So a motor should have a little bit of end float. That's great. Feels good. Okay, we need to put it back in the housing after we get the brushes back in. Now the brushes can go... You've got to make sure you get the right end. Obviously the curved end that rubs against the commutator. But it won't really matter which one goes which side because they're both the same uh, profile because obviously the commutator is perfectly round. So as long as they go in the right end, they will be fine. So everything's back where it should be. Just got to solder the end of this resistor back on. And we might actually just give the motor a test. There we go. We'll just give the motor a test before we put it back in the housing just to make sure that everything's where it should be and that it does still run and spin nicely. Okay, this looks a bit of overkill, but I've got a clamp on there because the motor's going to have a bit of a bit, bit of torque when it starts up and I don't want it to jump around and something touch uh, a live wire that shouldn't. So it's ready to go, the power's on. Um, I'm safe to hold this clamp because it's got nice thick plastic um, holding pads which will insulate but also it's clamping on the sides of the motor which won't be live anyway but the mechanism it operates it the grinder doesn't work until you put the lid down on it and that pushes this little spring across and it actually connects one of the brushes so if we push that down with a screwdriver it should burst into life there we go that sounds good it actually has got quite a lot of torque I can feel it jump Very high revving little motor. Okay, that sounds like a new one. I'll put it back in the housing and um, we can take it back into Christine. Okay, just getting everything ready to go together. Um, I was worried this seal might have chewed out, but I did find one online. In fact, there was this whole cover with the seal assembly available on eBay and it looked identical to that and it was new. So I don't think there's any issues there. And... The little, there's a little felt seal thing that goes just there over the top of a shim which sits over the top of the bronze bush and that's quite a thick fibrous one. It was Once I cleaned it up I could see it was supposed to go there and that should keep any muck out of the, out of the bush. So this large rubber spacer actually holds that firm and then squashes up against the back of the top bowl. So I don't think there's anything damaged there. Um, they are a coffee grinder, so they're meant to grind fine uh, dry powders. So I suspect there might have been some moisture in there at one stage, and that's what seized the bush up. If it's just used with a powder, whether it be coffee or sugar, or even, for God's sake, chalk, it, uh, it shouldn't get past that fibre washer, which will be sandwiched down. So I think it'll work fine there. I was a bit worried the seal was no good, but we should be able to just use what we have here. And it should have a reasonably long second life. And there we go, all back together. Um, it uh, it works. I just checked it before. And we can put the lid on and press it down. And it sounds like a new one. It sounds really good. Uh, so the lid thing presses this, which operates that little spring that you saw earlier. You can see it's got a fair bit of torque. It actually twitches the whole thing when it starts. So that all sounds good. The um, the top of the blade, as I pointed out earlier, has got a bit of a crack, but it's still holding together at this stage. I haven't done it up super tight. Uh, but everything seems great. Uh, it should last for a long time because the bushings and everything, I think, under there were, or the at least the seals all seemed okay once I worked out how it operated. Um, it's possible that blade will break. But um, yeah, look, we'll see how we go. But the motor sounds great. So that's a fix. So what did we learn? Well, we learned how to replace it. Well, at least free up a bush. Uh, hopefully you saw and understood a bit about electric motors in appliances that you may not have known. Was the job worth doing? Well, economically, no. Because of the time I spent on it, 
Um, you could just go and buy another coffee grinder for probably $20 at a, a department store. Uh, there are plenty of these on eBay in good going condition, um, although postage is a bit because they're quite heavy. So economically wise, I wouldn't fix them as far as a chargeable repair job goes, but I've shown you how you can fix your own, and that's what a lot of my videos are about, having to go to fix your own uh, problems it, it gives it another life it's not ready to be thrown into the waste stream yet uh, christine will use it i don't know how long that that uh, bushing will last i think it will last well uh, probably the only thing that's likely to go is that that top blade because the plastic's got a bit of a crack it might not last but if i happen to pick up another one of these in the e-waste with a good blade well there we go we'll keep it going so there you go hopefully you learned a bit about Appliances, um, hopefully you're keen to have a go at repairing your own. Uh, it's all about the big, the biggest trick of all isn't knowledge, isn't tools. It's just getting in there and having a go because there's a lot of things you can fix without specialised tools. So thanks for watching. We'll be doing a lot more repair videos soon, so keep an eye on my channel. See you next time.